Got an interesting one for us today. Um, this is a slow PC apparently. So um, I've done a little bit of investigation work and our client has loaded Windows 11 onto this PC. So let's have a look at it. So the client reported that the machine was running slow and looking at the front of it, you don't see many of those in machines nowadays, so immediately the alarm bells started ringing. Um, but we thought we'd take a look for him anyway and um, we're going to have a look at it today to see what we can do to speed things up a bit. So it doesn't want to change it. The recommendation from us would be to uh, purchase a new PC. However, um, he doesn't want to do that. He wants to go down the option of um, upgrading this. So let's have a look inside. Okay, so here's the machine itself. So we've got our two CD-ROMs here. We've got our uh, memory card reader, and then we've got our floppy disk in here. I've not seen one of these for, for years. So uh, let's have a look at the motherboard. So it's an Asus P50 QL slash EPU. Um, it looks in good condition. So spoiler alert, we have, um, I have given this a good blowout with uh, an air duster because it was pretty filthy, as you can imagine. Um, the CPU cooler was actually pretty good. So this um, <laughs> wasn't set. So it was set basically in the BIOS to run at full pelt all the time. Uh, it had a um, 98 mil fan on the back which is making an awful racket so I've actually changed this for a slightly bigger fan um, and given it a good dust off so <clears throat> let's have a look at the contents of the device itself so we've got one stick of RAM and this is this is DDR2 800 megahertz and it's a 2 gig stick so that will probably explain why um, Windows 11 is uh, running slow. So I'm going to pop that back in there like that. And we've got a mechanical hard drive here as well. So that is a the one terabyte 7200 spin speed. And then our graphics card. Not really sure what that is. That is an Asus. Asus graphics card. Can't see without looking. Well, well, whatever it is, it's very old and it's got no fan on it. It's just got a heat sink on there. Um, it's got a fairly recentish cooler by the look of it. And power supply wise, this looks like it's a 400 watt power supply. So what are the upgrade options? Well, let's just have a look a bit more in detail. So the upgrade options available to us are we need to fill up the RAM. Um, so I've got uh, I've purchased off eBay some additional memory. Um, we're going to take out the mechanical hard drive and we're also going to change that for a, a, an SSD drive. Um, and that's pretty much all we can do with this. Um, there aren't any CPUs available to us to upgrade the CPU. Um, if I had my way, we would change out everything basically, but uh, um, get rid of the floppy drive, keep his memory card reader in there, um, upgrade the motherboard, put a decent CPU in there, and then some decent uh, memory and a decent graphics card. Um, so, so without further ado, let's get this underway. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to clone the hard drive using Macrium Reflect. Um, and to do that, We've got our everything set up and ready to go. So we've got our 480 gig SSD drive here. Uh, that's connecting into USB. We've got our Macrium Reflect boot um, program on the USB drive. And then we've just got our keyboard and mouse plugged in there. So uh, let's go ahead and see if we can get this booted up and run through the cloning. So we, before we do the clone, what I'm actually going to do is I am going to um, I'm going to remove the CPU cooler and I'm going to reapply some thermal paste and the reason for that is this CPU is just running 
well the fans running far too uh, far too high it's on 100% all the time so I'm going to just before we do anything take a look at the thermal paste and see if that needs to be reapplied okay all right so let's have a look at that okay yes yeah, so that's bone dry so what we're going to do is we're going to clean up that paste and we're going to apply some new thermal paste on there we're going to give the socket a good clean around as well we're going to leave the cpu in there we're not going to take that out but we're just going to get rid of the paste we do that with some paste remover or in this case isobrupyl alcohol and that will get rid of everything and we'll take it off the cooler as well so the cool uh, the cpu in here it's a core 2 quad l9380203 in case you're interested okay so we're going to put a little pea-sized lump on there shouldn't need any more than that and this is uh, mx2 thermal paste from arctic and now make sure that all of these plastic feet squeeze together because it's got to go back in the holes without them bending out okay get that positioned in the right place never easy right let's get rid of the we'll just get the power supply out of the way so we can at least see what we're doing trouble with an old CPU cooler it becomes brittle so we are going to replace that I think I've got a stock cooler what should I do that should go in okay that's the cpu cooler removed and we're going to go with a stock cooler which should be perfectly adequate providing it uh, all lines up correctly okay excellent right so now that will be better 
we'll get that one around there out of the way and connected CPU fan okay that's better so we've got our Intel stock cooler on there now we can get our four pin supplementary power back in there and then we can get our power supply back in there so I also noticed that uh, on boot up the BIOS was moaning about uh, setting the date so what I'm going to do at this stage while I wait for our extra 2 gig of memory to arrive to give it 8 gig in total I'm going to take the RAM out of here and we're going to upgrade it with a matched pair so at least that gives it uh, 4 gig of memory for now while we do the clone this was from eBay and it was Ten pounds for two two gig sticks. It is pre-used, but it's good condition. So let's get that in the right way. Like that and then the other stick in the other yellow slot and then when the other memory comes in we can put that in the black slots and that will give us 8 gig of dual channel memory so at the moment that's 4 gig of dual channel memory which will be perfect for our needs and I'm going to change the BIOS battery as well so the BIOS battery is down here, just down here, so we've got to pop the spring out, release the battery, take that out, and then we've got a new Duracell 2032 battery, so that can go in there. Like that. Okay, now we get some power into it. All right, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go into the BIOS and just reset the clock on boot up. Okay, Let's see if changing it has worked. Power up. Okay, we're going to go down and set the cube fan control. So we're going to enable this and we're going to set it to silent mode. See if that uh, reduces the spin speed, which it should. And then we can exit saving changes. And then we're going to boot into Mac Room Reflect. Okay, and here we are in Macrium Reflex. So what you want to do is you want to go to Backup, and then we're going to select Clone This Disk. We're going to untick our um, recovery partition, because that won't clone, because um, we've got a 480 gig disk, and this is obviously a fixed partition, so we're not going to be able to fit that on the end of it. So we're going to select a disk to clone to. Uh, where is our where is our SSD drive? Get that connected back in. Let's cancel that, and we'll click on refresh. Okay, so here it is. It's already uh, it's already here. It's um, where I did a, a previous clone on it. But we're going to do untick that, clone this disk, select a disk. To so we're going from a Samsung and we're going to go to the 
SSD drive and I'm going to delete that partition there. I'm going to click on next and then I'm going to click on finish and then I'm going to click on all target data will be overwritten and that will then start the clone. So um, I'm not going to record this whole clone because it's likely to take absolutely hours but um, I am going to time it so it's midday and uh, we'll come back once it's completed. And here we are after the, after the clone's finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to, you can see how long it took, one hour, 40 minutes. So that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So we can say OK to that and close that. And then we're going to shut the system down. And then we're going to add the SSD drive in and see how that performs. So removal of the drive is straightforward. Just unconnect it, undo the two screws on this side and there's two screws on the other side. So far so good. Okay, couldn't start properly, so that's fine. We're gonna try again. And that's because um, we did power it off on previous boot up. OK, so success, absolute success. And boot up time was around about 20 to 30 seconds, which is which is pretty good. So let's see if we can get logged in. I'm not sure I know the password. Uh, I'm sure he's given it to me. Success getting logged in. Now we're not connected to any network, so that's absolutely fine, though. Let's just see if this gets booted into Windows. And there we go. OK. So let's now have a look at the system. OK, the fan's ramping up, but that's absolutely normal for what the system is capable of doing. So as you can see here, the Intel Core Quad CPU running at 2.5 gigahertz. We've got our four gig of memory, 3.25 usable, of which we will be adding additional memory as and when it turns up. Uh, Windows 11 21 H2, Windows 11 Home. So yeah, all in all, a uh, success for him. Um, <laughs> not the way that we would do things, of course. We would uh, recommend uh, upgrading to a newer PC but um, this is what he wanted to do so this is what we have done for him so let's go ahead and get this shut down and get this returned to our customer so if you found that video useful I'm not sure you will find that useful considering the age of the uh, the machine itself um, but if you did give us a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, just want to say thanks for your continued support and we'll see you in the next one.